Hello, Jeff Zwerink here with Give a Take. Thank you for joining us today. This is the segment of the show where we look at important scientific ideas to help equip you to be more confident in sharing the gospel. Today I'm joined by my friend and colleague Fuzz Rana, and we're going to ask the question, does the origin of life require God's activity? Buzz, it's good to have you here again today. Thanks, Jeff. So this is a fairly complicated topic. Lots of things go into the origin of life research, and it's one where people have been looking for a long time, and there's still a lot of work left. So can you just kind of lay out the structure? What are some of the things that are going on there? How do we think about origin of life research yeah, in general? Yeah. Well, and as you point out, the origin of life is one of the big questions in science mm -hmm. today, and one of the outstanding questions in science. And, you know... Uh, Unfortunately, origin of life researchers can't time travel and, and, and observe what happened. Mm -hmm. And they can get some insight from the geochemical record and the fossil record, but when you're going that far back in Earth's history, 3.8 billion years ago, th there's really a dearth of, of evidence that they have to guide them from the geological record and the fossil record. So they're forced to go into the lab and carry out laboratory experiments where they're trying to simulate different steps or stages in, in the origin of life process, trying to understand how simple molecules can become more complex and then how those more complex molecules can interact to form uh, these chemical mm -hmm. super systems that begin to assume the properties of life. So, so, so part of the challenge here, if you will, is that one, this just happened a long time ago, I mean almost four billion years ago. Um, but the other problem is, is that there's just not a lot of signatures left of what yeah. was going on then, and most of this would have been pretty primitive life, which doesn't leave fossils, those sorts of yeah. things, correct? So the only way to do this is in the lab, but presumably this takes quite a bit of time. And how do you, uh, So th this is kind of the scenario. Of right, how do right, you right. actually delve in and figure out what's going on when you don't have a lot of record of what the life was doing at the time. That's right, yes. So so in that context, what are the areas of peop that are people are looking at in hopes of figuring out what went on at the origin? Yeah, of well, when people are going in the lab and they're doing laboratory experiments, really one of the first questions that they would ask is, is a particular chemical or physical process possible to convert one compound, let's say, into another compound that would contribute to the origin of life process? So it's kind of like a proof of principle experiment. Okay. So uh, this is a sort of thing like the Miller-Urey experiment, right, if you will, right. where we need amino acids. Can we do something maybe right. like the early Earth that would produce amino acids? Th th okay. That's right, yeah. And then the second step would be uh, what exactly is going on mechanistically? Uh, what's really controlling that process? How does that process work? Trying to dissect that. Okay. And, uh, and, and so these are mechanistic studies. And I would say that when it comes to the origin of life question, when it, both the proof of principle and the mechanistic studies have been places where origin of life researchers have been really highly successful. Okay. They've, they've demonstrated in principle that there's a number of chemical and physical processes that could, in principle, contribute to the origin of life. They've, they understand mechanistically what's controlling these processes. Then the third goal is to try to then show that these processes are, are geochemically relevant, that is, that they would actually happen on the early Earth, that they could translate okay. from the lab to the early Earth. Okay, environment. so that's the distinction between those two is one, does this work in the lab and might it actually contribute to life? Right. And the other is, would that actually have occurred on the early Earth? Yes. Okay. Yes, and this is where I think that the Origin of Life uh, program has really struggled where there really is, if I would dare say, failure on the part of origin of life researchers is demonstrating uh, what I would say geochemical relevance to... So, so why, why the failure? What, what's, what's going on there? Well, this is the, the, the irony, and that is that the, to get these chemical processes to work in the lab, to get these physical processes to work in the lab, it requires chemists, mm -hmm. intelligent agents, okay. to, to set up the experiment. Now, of course, you're not going to have an experiment if the researcher isn't involved. And, but the point is, is that there are many experiments where the researcher is not just simply facilitating the experiment, but has actually played an integral part in the outcome of the experiment. And so, in other words, they've gone in and they've set up these highly unrealistic, carefully controlled mm. conditions where they're very carefully adjusting the temperature and the pressure they're, they're maintaining that temperature and pressure 
through exquisite control. They're adding the right materials at the right times and the right concentrations. They're stopping the reaction at the right time. And all of this activity is actually contributing to the successful outcome of the experiment. So in other words, the re hmm. researchers themselves have become part of the experimental design. But many times the researchers aren't aware that they've actually are a contributing factor to the outcome of the experiment. You know, that, it's interesting you describe it that way because the way it's often portrayed is, you know, you go into the lab, you set up these kind of very basic experiments, let them run, and you get the stuff that life, you know, the, the, the building blocks of life, if you will. What you're describing is a much more finicky procedure, it, it right. sounds like. Not that you just kind of throw things together and you end up getting life's blocks. It's like you have to pretty carefully craft and make sure everything works. Am I getting accurately what you're saying? You're, you're exactly right with that. And, 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 and what's interesting is original life researchers are beginning to recognize that human intervention is actually a serious problem in the design of their experiments mm. and how they would interpret the results. So it very well may be that a particular chemical process could take place in the lab that in principle could contribute to the origin of life, but would never be productive on the conditions of the early Earth just because of chemical contaminants and interfering materials, because of the, high, the, the uncontrolled hmm. physical in, in environment on the early Earth, the concentrations may be way too dilute. Uh, and so, so, if, so if you take out the chemist who's making sure everything is set up so that it works, the reaction doesn't work. Exactly. Which means it doesn't apply to the early Earth because there's no chemist there, presumably. To, to, to make sure it works right. properly. And, and that this problem is pervasive. It's not just, oh, an, an experiment here or an experiment there where that's the case. It is really pervasive in the entire discipline. And again, it's, it's interesting to see that original life researchers are really beginning to recognize this as a real problem. And to me, this is not only, not only calls into question the relevance of, of work in prebiotic chemistry, but it really begins to point to, a, I think, a provocative theological point that really a mind seems to be required mm. to bring about the origin of life. You know, that's just fascinating, Fuzz. I appreciate your comments and your insights there. You know, when we look at the origin of life, that provides some of the most powerful evidence, in my opinion, that God was involved in starting life here on earth. And we see that as the chemists go in and work to figure out how these reactions work in the lab, you take the chemist away and they don't work. And by analogy, I think we see the same thing that if God is not there in the early earth, life is not going to happen either. I would encourage you to go check out Fuzz's blog. It's called Prebiotic Chemistry and the Hand of God, which you can find at reasons.org to better equip yourself to go out and share these fascinating scientific discoveries so that you can share the gospel.